Our scripture reading is from Mark chapter 4, verses 30 through 32. Again he said, What shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest seed you plant in the ground. Yet, when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants, with such big branches that the birds of the air can perch in its shade. Pardon me. Would you have any gray poupon? But of course. <laughs> gray poupon, one of life's finer pleasures. Jesus used lots of parables throughout Scripture to try to explain to people what his message was, what the kingdom of God looked like, to take these really difficult concepts and put it in a way that they would be able to understand. In the scripture we read today, the parable, one of Jesus' shortest, he says that the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. We are called to be like mustard seeds that grow in our faith, that become trees that produce. We're called to be mustard seeds. Now the problem that I have whenever I read this parable is whenever I read it, I don't think about mustard seeds, I don't think about trees, because I don't know much about mustard seeds and trees. My first thought is always this commercial. Now, this commercial came out when I was five years old. But I still think of this commercial. That's quality marketing right there, right? And I don't even eat Grey Poupon. I am a yellow mustard kind of person. And yet still, when I hear this scripture about the mustard seed, I think of that question from this commercial. Pardon me, would you have any Grey Poupon? That's what I think of. And so as we explore this parable together about mustard. As we ask that question, we ask each and every week of what is Jesus asking of us? How can we take the next step as a body of believers? How can we take the next step in our individual journeys? We have to ask the question, what is Jesus asking of us when he asks us to be mustard? When he tells us that the kingdom of God, this thing that you are building, that you are a part of, it looks like mustard. What do we do with that? What do we do with that message? How do we allow it to speak to us? That's the question we're going to explore today. That's the question we're going to explore together. Now, probably like many of you, Jesus would tell these parables, and he would tell them because people knew what he was talking about. So the people that were listening to Jesus when he told this parable would have known exactly what Jesus was talking about when he talked about a mustard seed. They would have known exactly what Jesus was talking about when he talked about the, must, the mustard shrub or bush or tree or whatever it grows into. I have no idea about any of that. And I don't know if any of you are growing mustard trees at home. So I did a little research, right? The mustard tree, which is probably the black mustard tree, which is what Jesus would have been talking about most likely, looks something like this. It's not a real pretty thing. But we get what Jesus is saying. We see it kind of grows up and transcends the shrub level and moves into a tree. We see how wide it is. Okay, This is the tree that Jesus is talking about here, that it grows and the emphasis here, as it is in many of Jesus' parables, is about the idea of growing. Jesus uses lots of parables that talk about the idea of growing. And so as we begin to talk about mustard, I think the thing we have to note, first of all, in this scripture, is that the mustard is something that grows. Now, growing is something that we're acquainted with. We know through our lives that we grow, right? A few weeks ago, I explored this idea of the theme park ride height requirement and how it's affecting our daughters. This is part two of that. We went to Dutch Wonderland a couple weeks ago and we found that our older two daughters are each about a quarter of an inch below the next height level. Okay? Now, what this has allowed us to do as parents is now every time we sit down to dinner to eat 
and they're not eating, we can remind them about that quarter of an inch, right? Because we're going back to Dutch Wonderland in a few more weeks because we have season passes, thanks to my parents, so we're going as much as we can. We're going back. And if they eat their vegetables and they eat their protein, they, they might get that quarter of an inch by the time we get back, right? Most of their life is revolving around trying to get taller at this point. That's their primary goal in life. And growing is an important thing, right? We're, we're called to grow. But what Scripture always asks of us is how are we growing and in what direction we're growing. Jesus highlights that the mustard tree grows up, right? It grows taller. It gets, it gets higher than most shrubs. Now, often when we think of the idea of going up, that's where we think of God, right? We know God's not really up. God's everywhere. But we also think of this idea of going up. We're supposed to grow towards God. Through our lives as we grow, we're supposed to grow toward the Lord. We grow in our lives. Getting taller is usually considered to be a good thing, right? We can grow taller. I'm not making fun of any of the shorter people here. Hank Witter didn't come to a 9 o'clock. I was going to give him a whole time. I'm not growing any taller. I keep growing this way, right? This is the bad way. What way are we growing? There was a famous theologian, one of the first theologians, Augustine, who talked about, he came up with this Latin phrase of in se curvatus, which is a fancy way of saying we're always worried about ourselves. Right? He had this idea that as we were growing, we were growing in upon ourselves because that's all we were concerned about. When we don't have the Lord, we are our own gods. We're just worried about what works best for us, what we want, and we're growing just more and more in on ourselves. We're not growing towards God. And yet when we find our faith in Jesus Christ, when we're saved, when we begin that relationship, we readjust. Instead of growing towards ourselves, growing in upon ourselves, we begin to grow towards the Lord. We begin to grow towards God, not in our own ways, but in the ways of the Lord. Where are you growing? Which way are you growing? Have you ever seen a plant that ends up growing in a weird direction because it's trying to get to the sun, off to the side? We need to grow towards God. Because if we're not growing towards God... We're going to grow towards ourselves. We're going to grow towards the things of this world. We're going to grow towards things that are not of God. And so to be a mustard seed, to pursue the kingdom of God, is to understand that we need to keep singular focus on God, that we need to orient our lives to grow towards God, not away from God. In that way, we pursue what is of the kingdom. But Jesus doesn't just talk about the tree. He talks about where it comes from. He talks about the seeds, right? Now I had to look up this too because I don't know what a mustard seed looks like. So I found this. These are black mustard seeds, which was probably what Jesus was talking about when he talked about mustard seeds. Now Dwayne was asking me earlier, how do you get yellow out of that? I don't know. That's beyond my pay grade. I don't know how you get yellow out of that mustard. But Jesus chose this because it's such a small seed. Yet out of this small tree, that's the small seed, a large tree grows. It's very unexpected. When I was in college, I had a job working third shift at Lowe's. I unloaded trucks. And when I started working there, the guy that was working in the same area as I was, his name was Nate. All right? So Nate, Nate had really grungy clothing. He had sleeves of tattoos up both arms. He had a bunch of piercings in his face. A very interesting looking guy. And I was really concerned because in high school I ran with like the clean cut youth group crowd, right? The, you know, we did, no one had any weird piercings or tattoos and we didn't drink or smoke or any of those sorts of things, right? And so I was kind of concerned about working with Nate. And so the first couple nights went by and we didn't really talk about much. We just kind of went about doing our jobs. The third night, I'll never forget this, Nate came up to me. He's like, can I ask you something? I said, oh, this is going to be interesting. Nate looked at me and he said, do you know who Jesus is? You could have knocked me over with a feather. 
And I realized just what a terrible person and human being I had been for assuming who Nate was just because of his appearance. And then moreover, I had shame in myself because my question was, why wasn't I the person who asked that question to him first? Why did I wait and let him ask me? And it was because I assumed he didn't want to hear. I assumed he didn't want to know. And I learned in that moment, I spent the rest of the summer chatting with Nate, and we talked about our faith and relationships, and we both grew in our knowledge of Jesus Christ through talking together. But I'll always remember that because it, it's the basis of what Jesus is saying here. He wants to remind you that the kingdom of God is unexpected. The kingdom of God shows up in places that you don't expect it to. The kingdom of God shows up in people that you don't expect it to. The kingdom of God is unexpected. When it grows, it grows in unexpected ways. Just as that tiny mustard seed grows in a way you would never expect. So the kingdom of God grows in unexpected ways. And so we, as the body of Christ, those who are builders of the kingdom, we need to be prepared to be open to the idea that the kingdom of God God might show up in places that we don't expect. We need to be open to the kingdom of God working in our lives in ways we don't expect. And that's hard because we like expectation, right? We like knowing that every Sunday we can come to the same church to worship at the same time, that we can sit in the same spot in church, that the order of worship is going to be exactly the same every week. I don't know why we print the order of worship in the bulletin. We just give you the hymn numbers. Right? We like expectation. We like knowing exactly what's going to happen. We get uncomfortable when we don't know what the plan is. But my friends, the reality is the kingdom of God is unexpected. When you ask Jesus in your hearts, it might work in unexpected ways. There are people in this church who will tell you that there are things that they've done in the name of Jesus Christ that they never ever thought they would do. That's the kingdom. That's being the body of Christ. That's being the mustard seed. Allowing God to work in your heart in unexpected ways. Saying, yes, I'll follow you, Lord. Even if it leads somewhere that I'm not ready or prepared to go, I'll follow you anyway. Understanding that the kingdom of God exists in all kinds of different places. Not just here. Not just when you come sitting here on Sunday morning, but out into the world. It exists within people like Nate, who I never expected it to. It exists in places in this world that we might consider vile and ugly. The kingdom of God is all over. We need to search for it. We need to build it. We need to be able to say yes when it manifests itself in unusual ways in our faith story. Are we ready for unexpected growth of the kingdom in our lives, in our church, and in our community? That's what it is to be the mustard seed. Jesus also speaks. It's unexpected not just because of how high it goes. It grows out, right? It grows out wide. The branches of the mustard tree are wide. The next great step that the Salisbury family is planning on taking is to get one of these things. My girls want a hamster. We thought maybe it would be a phase. It's not. Our girls want a hamster. And so I have begun the effort of taking the research, of trying to get a hamster, of getting all the things I need to get a hamster. And one of the horrifying things that I've found out is that, as I've looked at all these different cages and things, is that if there is any weak point at all in your cage, the hamster will find it, and it will get out. And then you have a real fun time. I preached this twice already, and I've heard a multitude of escaped hamster stories that now really scare me, okay? But I thought that was amazing, that no matter what, if there's any way to get out of that cage, if there's any way for the hamster to escape, the hamster is going to find it. If there's any way for it to get out, the hamster is going to do it. And when we look at this mustard tree that's supposed to be the kingdom of God, the way that it expands, I think it's telling us that the kingdom of God is in many ways just like that hamster. That the kingdom of God is going to find a way out into the world whether you like it or not. We're not able to cage up the kingdom of God. The problem is sometimes as a church, we try to do that, right? 
We like to make cages for the kingdom of God. Sometimes we build walls that we want to keep the kingdom of God in. Sometimes we can come on Sunday morning, we can dwell in the kingdom, and then we can shut the door on the way back and we'll say, God, we'll see you on Sunday. Sometimes we want to keep the kingdom locked up. But being mustered is about taking the kingdom of God and building it not just in this place, but going out and building it, taking it to the world, taking it outside of these walls. The kingdom of God is going to get there whether we want it to or not, but it's going to be a lot more fun if we're along for the ride. The kingdom of God is going to grow. We can be part of that if we are committed to taking the kingdom of God out with us. If we are committed to starting and being part of ministries that affect people outside of those who come and sit in these pews on Sunday morning. We all need to commit to being part of a kingdom that reaches out. Just as that mustard seed grows. And Jesus assures us, he said the mustard tree grows and because of its branches, birds come The birds of the air can come and can rest and can nest in them. We know that God is going to be with us. When that kingdom goes out into the world, when the body of believers goes out and takes the kingdom and builds the kingdom out in the world, we know that there will be fruit to that ministry. We know that people will come. We know that people will hear the word of the Lord. We know that those birds of the air will be here because of the message of Jesus Christ. My friends, we don't just grow up. We don't just grow out. We don't just grow unexpectedly. We grow as a body together. And I always think that includes the end product of mustard, right? I don't know a lot about mustard seeds. I don't know a lot about mustard trees, but I know about mustard, right? This was another part of the Grey Poupon ad. Spread good taste. Which partially meant you had to say in that weird accent, like, great poupon, right? But it's the purpose of mustard, right? Why do we use mustard? We use mustard so that things that we put it on taste better, right? How many of you are mustard on hot dog people? All right, the ketchup people, you can go to whatever. (laughs) Have you ever tried recently to eat a hot dog without mustard or ketchup on it? It's a horrifying experience, okay? You need, you need that taste. You need that thing to add, no matter what it is, no matter what kind of mustard. It's always about adding taste to something. It's about making it taste better. And when we look at some of these scriptures, some of these parables Jesus uses, he uses a lot of food items that add flavor, right? Whether he's talking about mustard. Later, Jesus would say, you are the salt of the earth, right? It makes things salty, makes things taste good. You're the, you're the yeast that makes bread edible, that causes it to rise, right? Why is this theme here? I think it's because the kingdom of God is something that brings flavor to the world, and we need flavor, right? The other day, I'm someone who loves chicken wings, right? I'm sure that surprises you. So I went somewhere the other day to order chicken wings. I was looking through all the options. And they had an option for the chicken wings that was simply called naked. Which was kind of weird of itself. But what that meant was there was no sauce of any kind on the wings. Why? What is the point? The wing's primary thing is to be a vessel for all that flavor, all that spice, all that sweet, whatever it is that you like in your sauce. That's the primary reason to me that you eat chicken wings. Yet those had no flavor. My friends, we exist in a world where there are many people who are going through their lives and something is missing. There's something that's not there. When we look at our world, this is evident. There are people who are searching for purpose. There are people who are searching for meaning. 
And what it is to be the mustard of the world is to say, we have found that meaning. We have found that taste. We have something to put on our hot dog. We have something to put on our hot wings. We have all these different things because the Lord, the salvation that we have in Jesus Christ lives in our lives. And so when we go to wake up in the morning, we have a purpose. We have a reason. We have a mission that's been given to us by the creator of the entire universe. That's what it is to have flavor. That's what it is to have a purpose. And to build the kingdom of God is to take that message, to take that flavor and spread it to the world. Because my friends, there were a lot of people who are asking that famed question of us, pardon me, would you have any great poupon? Too often we as the church respond like the guy in the other car and we say certainly. And then we just start driving off. We've been given a gift. We've been given a gift in the salvation, the message, and the good news that we have. A gift that allows us to grow. A gift that allows us to grow out into the world. A gift that allows us to do things we never thought possible. But it's a gift that's not meant to be kept to ourselves. It's a gift that's meant to be shared. We live in a sad and flavorless world. The church of Jesus Christ is called to bring flavor to that world. Our church of Jesus Christ is called to bring hope to that world. The church of Jesus Christ is the answer to that question that people are asking. When people are searching, the answer is Jesus Christ. And to be the mustard of the world, to be the salt of the world, to be the yeast of the world, is to give people the meaning that we know deep down in our hearts. And that is what we are called to be as the church of Jesus Christ We are called to be the great poupon of the world. We are called to be the salt, the yeast, whatever you like for flavor, the butter, whatever it is. That's what we're called to be to the world. Take that message outside of this place. Take that message to someone. Tell them who Jesus is to you. Tell them about what Jesus has done in your life. Because it makes all the difference. People are searching. Jesus is in the heart of every single person in this world just working and working. Let us take the message and spread it. Let us bring others to the truth that we know. Let us build the kingdom of God one soul at a time. My friends, would you bow your heads and pray with me? Gracious God, I thank you for my brothers and sisters here. I thank you for the mission that they are called to. I thank you, Lord, that they know that mission and they show up. And so now, Lord, empower all of us. Lord, give us the strength. Give us the words. Give us all that we need to take your message out into this world. Lord, you have called us among so many other things, to be a mustard seed, to grow, Lord, in our faith so that we can bring others to the faith that we have in Jesus. Lord, work through your people gathered here. Lord, help us to be a spicy church, a church full of flavor, a church, Lord, that takes that out into the world. We pray all of this in the name of the one who has given us everything. Jesus. Amen.